Welcome to Dish and Nutrition, where we dish on trending nutrition topics, all the while making it easy and fun to understand. I'm your host, Sarah Williams. And I'm your co-host, Emma Bolin. So I was reading our podcast submissions um, on our Instagram page, and one that really spoke to me was, how can I lose weight without psycho tracking of macros or calories? Is it even possible? And I felt like as a retired fad dieter, mm. I thought this was a good topic to talk about today. Just because I'm in remission. <laughs> you're in remission. I understand. Honestly, I say that like I'm a retired fad dieter, but like I'm not going to sit here and be like i'm not susceptible yeah. to things like, like that. the mindset doesn't fully yeah it's absolutely always in the back for it me doesn't it's just not like one day it turns off like it's a i would probably say it's an everyday battle for me honestly no truthfully no that's nice that honestly makes me f- feel good to hear because sometimes yeah. like even people who have a degree in this struggle Oh my gosh. Yeah. No, especially, honestly, it wasn't until, I don't know, I was at the end of my undergrad that I really started to lean in into like intuitive eating and, you know, just veering away from all the diet culture that we were raised in. It was honestly at the end of my undergrad that I started like veering away from like tracking and everything. I, it was then that I realized like, oh, maybe I shouldn't view every single food that I eat as like a number or a percentage when I was tracking macros, I feel like the trend that I noticed the most is like people count calories and then they switch to macros because they're like, Oh, that's, that's what even is counting macros. So macros are the three macronutrients. So protein, fat, and carbohydrates. Oh, and you count those and you count them, like distribute them evenly throughout the day. Um, and there's like a percentage that they try to hit. It's actually, it's like a puzzle, And I feel like if you're not in a mindset of restriction and you genuinely want to know what's inside of your food, it can be a really Mm -hmm. good tool, but it is such a slippery slope. No, it sounds like it. Count. I feel like for me personally, counting anything is slippery. No, yeah. It was everything that I tried regarding counting anything with numbers. I always just took it one step too far. Yeah. Like my brain just focuses on like the wrong numbers even if the numbers are good you know what i mean yeah absolutely it's it's just you don't want to see food as a number and removing that mindset is still an everyday battle like i'm not even going to sit here and act like i'm i'm fully fully healed because i I really don't think if you ever did fall into that and Mm -hmm. not everybody does some people don't have issues with their relationship with food and that's amazing and bless you for that (laughs) i'm not jealous at all yeah i'm so jealous actually (laughs) but you know, it's an everyday struggle and I work on it every single day. And I'm thankful I have a lot of people in my life who are aware of my old bad habits and they can like call it out too if they see me like, hey, why are you, why are you looking that up? Why do you need that? Mm-hmm. Is it possible to lose weight without tracking then? Also, side note, my For You page is always about that. Mm-hmm. It's like, I ate 1,600 calories. Yeah, no, it it definitely is possible to lose weight without tracking. And I say that very carefully because I don't want intentional weight loss to be like the main goal of if someone does not feel comfortable in their body, mm-hmm. I want them to focus on different things rather than just the number on the scale. But at the very base of what I'm saying, yes, it is possible. Intentional weight loss is fine as long as it's done correctly. I I don't demonize like intentional weight loss. If that is something that someone feels that they would like to do to feel more comfortable in their body, that's fine. Bodily autonomy is everything in this field. I think I've said that almost every episode, but I do feel like this is such a crazy slippery slope of, Since, you know, you can do it yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't have to seek out help. So you can go as extreme as you want. Mm -hmm. But and there's so many different ways to like that are deemed weight loss. Yes. Yeah. Quote unquote weight loss. So many. Instead of tracking calories, which I feel like a lot of people, that's what they're most common. It's like most commonly heard. What can we do? Yeah. No, that I mean if someone's beginning their weight loss journey and you like Google it, click, 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 it's obviously going to be like count your calories. Mm -hmm. If you go into any tracking app, it's going to be like calorie deficit, calorie deficit, calorie deficit, which that is how you lose weight that I'm not defying science because that is 
how it mm-hmm. works. But if you don't want to focus on numbers, you can focus on what you're doing. And I know that sounds like really cliche. Yeah. Um, it's that easy, folks. <laughs> it's that easy. There's the simple magic number. No. Um, so number one thing you can do is like eating whole nutrient dense foods. And these are going to sound really like you're going to the doctor's office and you're reading a pamphlet, but I want to break them down to make them quote unquote digestible. (laughs) But But I, I really just want to like, there's a reason why they're in so many pamphlets because it, it is true. So eating whole nutrient dense foods like fruits, veggies, lean proteins, whole grains, and healthy fats. I know that sounds so redundant and just the most basic thing you could ever hear. Mm -hmm. But if you truly look at a snapshot of what you eat during the day, Mm -hmm. are you really eating fruits and veggies as much as you probably should? I'm not. Lean proteins like chicken, turkey, or like 93 95% lean beef cuts things like that whole grains are you purchasing the whole grain options of foods that you like to partake in mm-hmm. which thank god for food science because there are so many whole grain options nowadays i feel like so whole grains better whole grain is just fantastic because it has a lot more nutrients in it okay. and it has more fiber in it which can help with satiety or the feeling of fullness and it can, it also obviously aids in digestion. And there's just like a plethora of things oh, that. I didn't know that. Yeah. So like whole grain bread over white bread, or is that a whole nother topic? No, we can talk about it. That's a fantastic. This is just a side note question. No, I love it. Um, so I'm a big advocate for whatever you're most likely to eat, please purchase it. But if I had, if I was put in a corner yeah. and someone was like, which one Two do you want? Bread. Yeah. I as a dietitian would probably opt for a whole grain option because the whole grain option just holds so much more nutrients. Mm. The white bread, the nutrients are mostly stripped away in the processing. There's so much more nutrients in the whole grains because all parts of the plant are basically present. But no, I genuinely was curious. Like people always say like brown rice is better than white white rice but that one actually i the difference is like almost negligible i know people say that there really isn't that big of a difference and i honestly prefer white rice i do too and i I just don't like the taste alone it's just get brown rice and then i saw online and i was like did you know they're actually the same calorie count well same calorie count but like also like the nutrients like is not that big of a difference but i will say the nutrient difference between white bread versus whole grain there's a pretty big significant difference but also i you know food preference food accessibility i want to be cognizant of those things as well if you have accessibility to whole grain options and you don't mind the taste i would probably recommend whole grain over white bread if that was a question yeah i said calorie count no yeah like but i shouldn't be eating food based on the lower calorie but it just is like that's so genuine of you though no i know i just realized that i'm like oh crap probably (laughs) not good of me no but you're like aware of it now and that's it's i mean because i told sarah i was gonna only eat 1200 calories and she got really mad yeah of course i got really mad because that is the amount of calories a toddler or a bedridden elderly patient needs and if you're (laughs) eating 1200 calories a day that is not enough I don't know where 1,200 calories came from. I do remember that was like the golden number. Oh, no. When I did my BMI, like the BMI scale. Oh, BMI is trash, first no, of I know. all. I, I want to just like put that on the record. BMI is trash. Pounds and have like, I saw, I read an article, mm-hmm. a TikTok article. <laughs> At least you're honest. No. no, BMI is trash. 1,200 calories. I, I don't know. I just remember like growing mm-hmm. up, of course, like I had n- no understanding of like how to lose weight healthily. So I just, of course, yeah. Googled it and it was mm-hmm. like, eat 1,200 calories. No, so I was like, okay, worst however many days I did it no, of I my know. life. And then, of course, healthy fats, which I yeah. feel like is a touchy subject because people see healthy fats and if you want to quantify it by numbers it is objectively higher in calorie Mm. because you know avocado peanuts those hold caloric density more than you know fat-free options obviously Mm -hmm. and um but is that tricky can that get tricky then it could get tricky because it 
could be easy to like over consume because yeah. I mean, let's be honest, avocado is delicious. Peanuts are so oh, delicious. Yeah. Like eating peanut butter for like yeah. a whole cup of peanut butter. I mean, I wouldn't recommend eating a whole cup of peanut butter. No, I have. I'm saying like, but yeah, no, me it's too, so easy but like to it's do. so easy to be like, oh, mm-hmm. that was. Yes, definitely. Yeah. This is where like the next segue really comes into play because you definitely want to consume your healthy fats because it's so good for brain development, heart health, um, all that stuff. But portioning is the next thing Mm. you can focus on instead of tracking calories, which again, I told you these are going to sound like doctor office pamphlets, but it's so true. Like portioning, if you don't want to quantify into numbers and actually put them on a scale, portioning will help a lot. And visually portioning will work as well you can do the hand method Mm. have you heard of the hand method no i don't think so so i can like post this on our instagram but it's basically you're able to use your hand because it's going to be the most accurate to what your body needs because i mean obviously your hand is your hand (laughs) and my hand is definitely different than like my husband's hand (laughs) right you know it just is like... So you pick up your food with... What? No. <laughs> Hold on. I couldn't remember exactly, so I just looked it up. So the clenched fist is about one cup. So that's useful for estimating like cooked rice, pasta, potato, or fruit. Really? Oh my gosh. I eat like nine fists of pasta. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's so bad. No, no, it's not that's bad. I can't lose this weight. is just a tool. You're not going to live or die by this. Just a tool that you can use and put in your back pocket. You're not going to live and die by these. If you happen to have two fistfuls, that's perfectly fine. It's okay. The other one is the size of your palm. So that's useful for estimating meat, chicken, or fish. I personally think I I eat way more than that. Same. Personally. But that's also good though, right? Because protein, like the more protein you eat. No, yeah. So like, so tricky. I don't want yeah. someone to hear this and be like, well, I have to use the yeah. hand method and being and look at their plate and be like, oh my gosh, this is so small. Mm-hmm. This is just a tool. Just a tool. Ba- base it off of like, I mean, you know your body better mm-hmm. than anyone else. If you look at your plate and you see how much like chicken you have because you base it off the palm of your hand and you go like, no, I need more. Eat more. Yeah. You eat more. Um, this is just a tool and one handful is useful for like estimating nuts or raisins. I don't personally eat a handful I, yeah, of raisins. Yeah, I don't like raisins. I don't know why they use that as an example. All. Uh, two handfuls is useful for estimating vegetables. Okay. And then a thumb is useful for estimating peanut butter or like hard cheese. Oof. Yeah, no, I don't stick to that at all. My charcuterie board has 100 thumbs on it. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. And the tip of the thumb is like one teaspoon, which is helpful for estimating oils, mayonnaise, Oh, that's butter. probably a good one. I kind of like that one, actually. I might. Well, you said your what? what the is tip it? of your thumb. So like this little portion. Okay. Please don't feel restricted to just your hand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I want to make that hungry, so like, abundantly yeah. clear. Like, again, another thing to focus on. This is just like a, as a huge umbrella to whatever I'm speaking on is your hunger hormones. And I know that can go in many different conversations because people with hormone imbalances or people who have been restrictive eating, they can throw off their hormones Mm -hmm. um, with ghrelin and leptin. Those are your hunger hormones, which can be thrown off. I know that's a whole nother different conversation, but you know your body best. If you're hungry, eat. Yeah. (laughs) Food is fuel. Wait, I have a question real quick. Oh, sorry. No, go for it. Or I guess it's not really a question, just more so your opinion, but... I mean, I hate that it's weight loss because, like you said, you don't demonize weight loss. But I also, don't, no. Like they say, so for animals, like your dog, if your dog is overweight or needs to lose weight, they just cut back on portions. Like do you, is is that kind of like similar to what you're saying? In I a mean, way? In, a, in a way, yeah. I mean, I'm just saying like, if you don't want to track calories, okay. just being aware of portions yeah. is be cognizant of like, how much you're eating yeah, and you're things like that. Body. Yeah, I yeah. mean, because that's what causes weight yeah. loss or weight gain. No, you're right. Objectively, like that's not me just being like. No, no, you're right. Doing, I like mean, that's for me, science. I binge, <laughs> I, I no, I mean, poor animals. They have a little bit more extreme. Like they'll just go on three days of like, hey, don't feed your animal for a couple oh my gosh, days. I know. And I'm just like that poor. I mean, I've never done it not to my with, dog. Yeah, not my dog. Poor Dakota. He's no, he doesn't go on diets. But yeah, so portioning, if you don't want to use the hand method, you can just, a very easy way you can do, I think there's a MyPlate 
that um, is a good example, but you can just do half your plate with vegetables or mm. like a salad or whatever, a quarter with a lean protein and a quarter with whole grains or starchy vegetables. That's super easy to mm-hmm. remember too. If you don't want to use the hand method, if you, if someone's like, I really just don't, I feel like the hand method is too restrictive. Cool. Try this way and see yeah. if it works for you. What do you think about, I see this all the time. It's like, try to do the rainbow on your plate. Like, what are your thoughts on that? I love that. Okay. Eat your rainbows. The more colorful a plate, the happier the I am. Really? Because Blue different- starburst, yellow starburst, <laughs> green starburst. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, no, they do say that, though. I see that all the time. Yes. No, I love the Eat Your Rainbow initiative because- Different colors mean different nutrients. Mm -hmm. And the more colorful a plate, the more nutrients you get. It's a bountiful plate of nutrients. And I love that. Love that. We love that. We love eating rainbows in this household. Another thing you can focus on instead of tracking calories is regular physical activity. Again, doctor's office. But I can't express this enough. Like, if you hate running, you don't have to run. If you enjoy yoga, do yoga. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like just I'm harping on your things. Body. Yeah, it's just intentional movement. I honestly call it intentional movement because I'm going to go work out puts a pressure on people. Mm-hmm. I feel like they no, automatically hate. just yep. turn off when they're mm-hmm. like, oh, I need to go work out. Or I have to go to the gym. Like, yes. I hate the gym. It's like, hey, I'm going to go move my body. It, it doesn't like that doesn't put it in a box. It could just be walking around the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. It could be for all I care. You could be doing hopscotch for <laughs> an hour. <laughs> if you enjoy that, do it. And your body is going to your body's going to thank you. Your I mean, body your body is going to thank you to move. Yes, no? exactly. Right? We're not supposed to just be sitting down at computers Mm-mm. all day. I feel like a lot of people who are like in those extreme office jobs where Mm -hmm. they are sitting from 8 to 5 p.m., 8 to 7 p.m., they're just like, well, I have no time. I will say this new trend of, like, the walking pads underneath the desk. I love. It's amazing. I love that trend. Um, I do think it could be a slippery slope. Yeah. I I really do. for sure. Yeah. But I do love it with someone who has the intentionality of, like, I genuinely just want my body to be moving because yeah. I don't like it when it creaks and croaks when I, I stand take up from care the desk. Of my body. Yes. Yeah. And like, exactly. I want to live a long, healthy, strong life and ec- er, exercise. See, like, do you, do you like the word exercise? Exercise is totally fine. Yeah. Okay. When I say like, I prefer, like, it doesn't mean I don't say those things. Yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah. if I'm talking it about is. it in a professional context, yeah. I yeah, use, you're right. you know, intentional movement, but that's what it is. It's yeah. exercise. I just know if I use certain terminology yeah. people just will shut down yeah so you have to be no, very totally get that. conscious of that like exercise it's like taking care of your body almost in a sense yeah it's almost right? it's just preparing for the future like yeah. if you don't i hate i don't want someone to be like well i gotta work out because i want to look good and if that's why someone wants to work out like okay that's your that's prerogative my struggle. that's my struggle every day no i get that and if that's your prerogative that that's yours but I like to work out because I've been very open about this. I don't have the strongest heart in the entire world. <laughs> she is structurally sound, but I I want to help her out as much as I can. I mean, like mine is a gen- genetic mutation and I can't do anything about mm-hmm. that. But what I can do is do cardio to help mm-hmm. out like in ways that I can and I strengthen her in yeah. different ways. You take you you exercise oh. because your heart needs my i exercise because it needs it but also i need to be able to carry my 30 mm-hmm. pound toddler in <laughs> in case of an emergency and i know that sounds like a really weird reason to work out or like that's why i lift sometimes but like i genuinely no my husband is in the military it's inevitable that he's going to be deployed and there's going to be situations where i have to lift her or i have to be strong and lift something mm-hmm. i don't want to be just a fragile meek widow mm-hmm. girl like i mean i am objectively she's but petite i want to be able to yeah be independent in that and know that you can take aspect. care of yes exactly yeah, if, like if i need to be to. yes yeah, yeah. No, I respect that. I mean, we live in Tornado Alley, so yeah. God forbid you ever had to like run across a field with her in your no, arms. No, literally. You'd be able to, though. Yes, exactly. Like, there's just, it's so weird to think about intentional movement in terms of like that. But like, if you really sit down and break it down as to why do you want to do this? I want my body to feel good X, for the reasons of XYZ. Like, it gives you more of a motivation to 
continue to do it and it makes it more sustainable for you to continue to do it rather than I'm going to start this six week program because Mm -hmm. I want abs by the end of it. And side note, also, I don't know your thoughts on this. I feel like, and I don't know if there's like science, I'm sure there is somewhere or a correlation between, I feel like, so like, for example, my husband's grandfather, he was pretty consistent with exercise. Like most of his life, he was also in the military and he's almost he's almost 90 and he is still walks 30 minutes a day like his body's kicking whereas my grandmother which no i was gonna ask you like i wonder if oh my gosh yeah correlation like she never really was super um movement oriented yeah she would just like which knitting is cool but she would like sit and knit all day sure and, like, never really went on walks and sure. i mean her body went out on her at like 65 oh my gosh yeah there is a plethora of research that backs up you know like moving your body will promote a healthful body and that yeah. will follow you throughout the life for however long you do it and of course mm. i mean a person who sits at their job every single day Mm -hmm. and does not do intentional movement versus someone who like our husbands who are almost required to stay in a fit body. They have tests for that. Well, yeah, Yeah. yearly tests. But outside of that, like their bodies are going to withstand Mm -hmm. life better. No, you're so right. Yeah. There's a ton of research that with that. So like, yeah, if you, if your reason for movement is I just don't want to be a weak, feeble elderly person Mm -hmm. in the future that's enough reason to just keep your body moving and it doesn't have to be anything like you don't have to be an olympic trainer yeah you don't have to be doing triathlons or half marathons or marathons like i feel like everybody in their 30s are doing no literally everybody's doing a half marathon is a marathon i'm not gonna do it you can't peer pressure me into doing it i was literally gonna ask you but i I asked sarah if she wanted to do 75 hard she said I said, I you hate say? you. I'll no. do 75 soft. I'll do 75 <laughs> soft, which is basically just what I do now. Yeah. No, that's so true. <laughs> I do however many days alive. Soft. Is that a fad? Is 75 hard a fad? Oh. Oh. Oh, oh we went there. Oh, we, we went dished there. It. <laughs> no, it honestly sounds like it is low key. I know it is. I actually made a video about this. Oh, did you? Way back. I was still living Can in like New Mexico. This? I, see I it. literally hit it because I got so much oh, hate really? from like the yeah, gym bros. say 75 hard is life changing. Yes. <sighs> it's so it's like a cult, honestly. No, it is. It's really like a cult. I, okay, my specific background with dealing with a lot of people who have had a hurt relationship with their food. I don't enjoy the 75 hard in terms of that. It's so restrictive. It is very rule oriented. So rule oriented. Well, I mean, that's what it is. Like, no, you fail. You you have have to to, start over. Yeah, exactly. Which I mean, and I know people don't struggle. There are people in this world. They're beyond me. Congratulations. I couldn't be me, but there are people in this world who don't struggle with, their relationship with food and that's amazing Mm -hmm. and if they're like i like having a goal and if 75 hard is something that they want to do and they like having a goal and they like having structure then it's fine but if you're someone who has ever had a moment of hurt in your relationship with food i wouldn't recommend Mm -hmm. it because it could be such a slippery slope i when i look at a diet or a fat or whatever 75 hard mm-hmm. falls under. And I go, would I be able to go to a birthday party and eat Mm-mm. a piece of cake and enjoy it with my friends? And if the answer is no, I'm most likely not going to advocate it, advocate for it in my fullest because food is cultural. It is bonding. It yeah. is, it is not something to be ignored. It's, it is fuel, but it is so mm-hmm. many other things yeah. and it brings so many people together. I just, I personally, in my professional opinion, it is not my favorite thing in the entire world. Someone on TikTok, of course, TikTok, they did create the 75 soft because they were like, 75 hard is too restrictive. I mean, I know it's not like trademarked. I don't know if 75 hard is trademarked or copyrighted or whatever. Anyway, someone was like, I could do a 75 soft and it's way more Mm -hmm. achievable. It's like 10,000 steps. Yeah. I'll work out once a day or... I'll work out five days a week with two rest Mm -hmm. days. I also, with the 75 hard, I hate no rest days. 
your body needs no, freaking rest. You're so right. Because people are like, well, it's only like 45 minutes twice a day and they can both be walks or whatever, like for the rest day. And I'm just like, that's still, I don't know. If I'm sick, you can't get me to move from the couch. Right? And I wouldn't want to, but. And the water, the gallon water. Dude, what if I'm on a plane? <gasps> no, literally. Like the gallon of water is so me. cliche too. Not everybody needs a gallon of no, water. No, right? I know. Like when I, okay, so this is going into a different topic, but when I drink a gallon of water, like when I was in my super health, whatever, mm-hmm. and basically just falling down the rabbit hole of diet culture and I was doing the gallon of water a day. Did my, you do that? I mean, Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. It's yeah. hard. It's so I hard. Tried. I couldn't do I it. I was peeing every probably like 20, 20 to mm-hmm. 30 minutes. And my pee was clear. clear. It looked yep. like water. And that is not good. It is supposed to be like a pale really? light yellow. Yes. Like too clear is bad. Really? <laughs> yes. So it's like what's, yeah. the, what's the point if your exactly. body's not even You can't retaining. just quantify yeah. a number and be like you need everybody in this world needs to drink this i love if everybody wants to up their water intake Mm -hmm. i believe a very large percentage of the population is not getting the right amount of water no i mean me included Mm -hmm. as i'm drinking starbies and hasn't (laughs) i haven't had a drink of water today (laughs) yeah i i mean the whole water thing you definitely need to go off like your body's cues like if your water if your pee is clear as water like mm-hmm. that's not good yeah <laughs> and you can it, have a you can have some color in your yeah pee. not dark yellow no 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 we want a pale yellow anyway that's that's whatever that's neither here nor there okay so we were at regular physical activity oh this falls right into this was perfect perfect segue setting realistic goals Mm. so backing up to the 75 hard and someone was like well i want to do the 75 soft and they they created this easier thing i like it because it falls within the smart goals do you know what a smart goal is no oh i've got you smart goal is a specific measurable achievable relevant and time bound and i know that is a lot of words but instead of being like I want to lose. Wait, so it's an acronym? Yes. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah. But instead of being like, I want to lose 50 pounds, that's not specific at all. Like that's very yeah. broad, very bra- vague. How are you going to do that? Yeah. So instead of doing that, you can say to achieve that or work towards that, oh. even just putting that out of your mind, I want to work out. And you have to really take a stock of your life and go, okay, maybe four times a week is not enough or is way too many times. I I cannot feasibly go to the gym four times a week. So if you want a specific goal and measurable and achievable, you can go, I am going to work out three to four times a week. And unlike 75 hard, if you don't get to that, like it's not the end of the world. Exactly. You don't yeah. have to start over. Like tomorrow's a new day. You can try again. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's a whole God other bless. thing. Yeah, thank God. Wait, so smart is specific, measurable, measurable. achievable, relevant, and time bound. So it's like okay. I want to go to the gym three to four times a week for the next six weeks so it puts you within a time span and it's you can measure it so it's easier to say like okay for the next six weeks i can measure me going to the gym three to four times a week and that doesn't make me want to vomit thinking about Mm -hmm. doing that so that's that's a smart goal that's a smart goal no you're right yeah so that's that's what you can like you can just set realistic goals it doesn't have to be working out it can be I want to up my water intake. I want to literally just be outside more. Mm-hmm. If you're outside, you're more likely to be moving. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, so like, it's just like intentionality. Of, intentionality of setting a yeah. realistic goal. Yeah. Like it's not just setting yourself up for failure. Yeah. It's and, saying, oh yeah. Yeah. You I know, it's that. if you put, if you say, Hey, I'm, I'm going to lose 50 pounds. Okay. But like you, there's that's no roadmap. Hard, yeah, I mean, that's like, incredibly that's, hard, but like, yeah, in terms of getting there, how are you going to get there? What are you going to do? What are the things like it's setting the like footwork to achieve? Yeah. yeah, it's you want smaller goals to reach an ultimate goal rather than setting that ultimate goal and just kind of wandering in the desert. No, well, they say like a lifestyle. I don't know if you agree with this. Mm-hmm. Again, this is all like my TikTok for you page because. Well, that's why you're here. Yeah. To bring it. That's so true. As a general audience member. But they just say like small lifestyle changes are. Go so far. Yes. I fully. Yes. I fully, fully. Unfortunately, (laughs) 
fad diets have adapted like they know how to camouflage themselves now so like really? they'll be like it's not it's not a diet it's a lifestyle change i'm looking at a specific weight loss app that says they're not a weight loss app but they are anyway i'm not gonna name are you it. subtweeting oh i'm gosh. subtweeting right now anyway it's easy like it's a new marketing term, so you do have to be cautious yeah, of that. But I true. do love the undertone of what it is because lifestyle is sustainable. Like mm-hmm. if you if you make the change within your lifestyle, it's going to be sustainable and whatever that comes along with it is going to stay with you and the changes are going to stay with you. It also, I feel like for me, I always used to do like, okay, I'm going to do these five things, which could still be a lifestyle change, but it doesn't even have to be like now. I feel like I have a healthy relationships where... It's like, okay, I'm just going to try to do 3,000 extra steps this week. Yes. And then... That's exactly yeah, what a SMART like goal it is. Need you're, to, okay. it, you're, you're setting a very specific... Okay, yeah, yeah, It's yeah. something measurable. Yeah. And you put it within a time frame. And it's okay. achievable. You yeah, feel like you could right. truly achieve that. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's that simple. Yeah. But, I mean, like, I feel like we overcomplicate it as no, we humans do, are known though. to do. One girl I follow is like... Do 20,000 steps a day to lose eight pounds. Oh, I'm my. Like, that's like nine gosh. miles. We went to the air a show day. and we, we, yeah, no, we went to the air show and we walked, I think my aura ring picked up 22,000. That's wild. And I was like, people do this every day. Every day, dude. My feet my would feet fall off. So okay, so we talked about setting realistic goals. And the next one, this one is going to be really hard, okay? Are you ready? Ooh. You have to practice self-compassion. Ooh, that doesn't exist in my vocabulary. <laughs> You have to be kind to yourself throughout whatever health journey that you may find yourself, whether it be, I want to build muscle, I want to lose weight, whatever journey you may find yourself on, you have to practice that self-compassion because, I mean, whatever you think is what Mm -hmm. your heart is going to retain, as corny as that sounds, you know what I mean? Mm Mm-hmm. If you're just continually like self-criticizing or you're negative self-talking, you've like, you've already set yourself up for failure. No, literally. You've already That's like, so true. I mean, with me having a daughter, I really like, it's really challenged me because I have to be that much more self-aware of how I'm talking mm. about my body or even like she watches me. She is a sponge. <laughs> she watches me 24 seven. She groans when she bends over. She groans <laughs> when she bends over. So yeah, she's always watching. <laughs> yeah. Literally she'll pick up something off she's the ground. Like, she'll go, Ugh. and I'm like, you are two years you're old. Like, your, you, <laughs> your joints do not ache, but it's because she watches me. That's hilarious. But like, even when I'm just like looking in the mirror or like, you know like if you're looking Mm -hmm. at your face and looking at whatever blemishes you have or looking at your love handles like she sees me looking Mm -hmm. at them and she can pick up on my micro expressions of disappointment and shame and whatever I feel so like I have to really consciously work at that in front of her because I do not want her to have a negative feeling of her body whatsoever yes at all Paving the way. So instead, we want to cultivate self-acceptance, self-care, and self-love. And I know that's so 2024 of me to say. And I don't mean it in a way like you need to go on this. To Erewhon. Yeah, you need to go to Erewhon and buy the Hailey Bieber smoothie. Do some yoga. Yeah. I mean, if you enjoy yoga. No, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I love yoga. No, anyway, I can't talk like that. But it's genuinely at the very core of it if you don't respect yourself if you don't accept yourself if you don't care for yourself Mm -hmm. any goal that you set for yourself you're not going to achieve because you don't have the basic respect to your body to complete Mm -hmm. that task oh yeah no my dad used to because if you haven't picked up by now i have really bad body issues it's pretty plain and simple no, but my Don't dad. We all? <laughs> yes, life. My dad used to always say, like, imagine if someone was always saying the things that you're thinking to you. So, like, if my dad would come to me, like, oh, you're so fat, you have cellulite, your legs jiggle, like, blah blah blah. Yeah, could you imagine another person your body? That, to you? that would be your mental down. But I mean, you're basically doing that to yourself. So imagine exactly. what you're subconsciously doing. Exactly. So like practicing self-compassion is the kindest thing that you can do to yourself. And Mm -hmm. I know some people are going to listen to that and roll their eyes. Cough, cough, probably my sister. (laughs) (laughs) But you are allowed to like love yourself and care for yourself and, you know, accept yourself while also wanting 
to you you are allowed to want to change your body like um, that's Mm -hmm. not what I'm saying you're not allowed to do but you can also respect your body while you're in the process of you know changing it or doing whatever it takes to do that yeah does that make sense no I love that I need to do that I was beating myself up on Saturday night after having like five pieces of pizza but sunday is a new day Sunday is a new day of compassion and try again i think what people need to know is like it's not linear Mm -hmm. it's not going to be you're doing good you're doing good you're doing good you're doing good bad and then like everything is Mm -hmm. bad like it's that's just not how it works that's not how life works so of course there's going to be setbacks there's and honestly actually i take that back indulging while because Saturday you and I hung out Mm -hmm. and we had some friends over and it was a fantastic evening and we were just having a great time fun I'm not gonna say that like you had a setback because like what you were doing was enjoying life Mm -hmm. and if that's That's if that means technically indulging in what would be (laughs) recommended (laughs) if that means indulging in what would be technically recommended for like a serving size or a portion size or whatever then okay so be it because I hadn't laughed that hard in like no, so literally. long. We had so much we had fun. A freaking karaoke dance party. We did, and it was fantastic. And if that's what it means no, to right. fall off the rails, then okay, so be it. Like, one, we only, like, tomorrow is not promised. And that doesn't mean you can so go out and true. just eat a whole cake just because, you know, tomorrow's not promised. But it also does mean you're not going to kick yourself in the butt because mm-hmm. you may have had a little bit more than what you were planning on because you were enjoying yourself because you were having an intimate time with your friends yeah you know what i mean yeah it's like do you like the 80 20 rule yeah i like that uh, yeah no that's what i was thinking of but like maybe that we don't love that no it's fine it's a good it's a good tool okay like the uh, like the hand method and things like that it's a good tool okay if you're someone who's again sticks and sees numbers and like oh my gosh i i have only had 19 percent of you know working out in blah 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 like i no, wouldn't want to put that on someone okay, yeah 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 but i do like it as a like a if you glance at it yeah it's yeah. like okay like that's a good okay i see what you're saying yeah you know what i mean saturday filled my cup refueled my batteries so that's and that wor- also plays that's worth role. it yeah you like know my like mental health is better because Mental health is a huge yeah, no, role. Yeah, that's so true. I mean, physical health, and that's what we're focusing on in this episode, but, like, mental health, too. Like, you've got to mm-hmm. feed that. You've got to fuel that. You've got to work that out. And if that means having a dance party with your friends it, on Saturday night, like, I mean, that's what made mine feel better, but... What made you, your what feel better? Your mental health feel better. Oh, yeah. So true. Yeah. It's like working out for your brain or your soul. No, I guess mental soul, health would be your soul, I too. That. I mean... If you're someone who participates in a religion, like participating in your religious beliefs and Mm -hmm. like going to church and all those things that come along with it, that can feed your soul and it does feed your soul. There's so many different things that you also have to do outside of working out and, you know, portion control and things like that. That's a whole other beast. I love that. That is, this never ends. I love it. I know. It's a, it's a great conversation. And then if you're someone who genuinely does not want to track calories, does not even want to, you don't even own a scale. If you don't own a scale, there are some things that you can focus on if you genuinely are just like, I want to promote a healthful way of living. There's Mm. some different things that you can like shift your focus from or shift your focus to. And it can be, you can celebrate improvements in energy levels, which I have a toddler, so I don't know what that means. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> i'm just kidding kind of we can celebrate improvements in your mood i don't know about you but like if i'm actually really investing in my health and doing all mm. the things and doing my you know my smart goals i'm actually feeding my soul i have a great mood no that's so i true. mean like of course different like environmental factors are going to play a factor in that yeah. but I objectively have a better mood when I actually am investing in my health. So no, that's definitely that. something you can like focus on instead of like a weight benefit. You can focus on your strength. Like, are you able to bend down without mm. moaning and groaning? Are you able to go up the steps without being completely out of breath? Like that is something to celebrate. Yeah, that is something that is measurable sleep quality. <laughs> like that is, I mean, I laugh because I mean, 
my aura ring is like picking up really bad sleep quality. But there are things outside of my toddler who is waking me up, you know, a couple times a night. There are things that I'm mm-hmm. not doing. I'm not putting down my phone. I'm staying up probably later than I need to. I'm watching TV way later than I need to. There are things that I could work on. You know Wait. what I mean? No. Okay. <laughs> Wait. So like my toddler, that's that's something I can't control if she okay. wakes up, if she is impacting my sleep quality. Okay, yeah. That's out of my control. Okay, but there yeah. are things within my control. Oh, I see, I see, yeah. I see. Yes, There's yes, There's things yes. within my control that I could control that would mm. not make her wakings as oh, feel as yes. bad as they do Thank because you. of things that I no, that am choosing so to sense. do. I have dyslexia, yeah. sorry. <laughs> no, I agree with that. I literally went to bed at 8.30 and my body, like, na- well, not really my body, but my husband got up at 6 today, so I naturally got up at 6 and I didn't feel gross yeah i didn't feel awful you didn't feel like you got hit by a train because you got good prioritized yeah my sleep um some other things we can celebrate improvements in is just overall well-being like just feeling good like yeah i love that that's are you i don't know just do you feel icky i know like i'd probably say unfortunately 75 to 80 percent during the week around 2 p.m that is like the time where mm-hmm. I can assess my health the most. When you say focus on your health, are you meaning like everything we just listed prior? So yeah. like water, just like nutrients, prioritizing your health. Exercise. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. And then finally you can just focus on how you feel about yourself. I know mm. we just talked about self love, but That's like the hardest one, honestly. I know, but I honestly have an easier time loving my body when I am prioritizing and giving it the best tools. That's so true. You know what I mean? Like, I necessarily am not the biggest fan of my body after a long weekend of inactivity and True. not doing much versus when I No, I get what you're saying. Like intentionally make the efforts to when I am like in, when I rather than when I intentionally try to move my body yeah. and do things that promote health that, you know, are going to benefit. you. Yeah, yeah. It's like you can look at your body and be like, OK, we're yeah. we're doing this. No, that's we're we're treating her one right. Workout. <laughs> OK, slay in your fitness. Era. No, it's a placebo, but it's not. It's not a placebo. It's genuinely just I mean, it's. It's a whole mental no, it is. factor it is, that could be hours and hours worth of a conversation. But it's well, worth noting yeah. that everybody, I feel like, has noticed that you can love your body better mm. when you are treating it the way it deserves to be treated. Yeah. Go for a run and you can have some mac and cheese. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't love that no mentality. No wonder 12 year old me is. Well, I mean, I think that's a very common thing. Even in my For You page, I see that. It's like. Yeah. Okay, if you run X no, amount of that's miles, so that's true. equivalent to how many Oreos mm-hmm. or whatever. And it's like, that's not how that works. <laughs> like, that's, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there's that's so many, that's, not, I don't love that. Yeah. So yeah, that yeah, is, I love that. yeah, that, that is kind of things that we can focus on. That's it is amazing. possible to lose weight without psycho tracking uh, macronutrients or calories. Um, I do want to challenge those who are like, I want to lose weight here's a number that I want to lose. Is that number going to fix what your underlying issue is? Like, do you want to lose weight because Mm. you want your body to move better? Like, do Mm. you want to go up the steps easier? Do you want to be able to pick up your toddler and keep up with them? Or is it, do you think that number on the scale is just going to magically fix a lot of things? And I challenge those who are on a weight loss journey to ask themselves that and really take stock into the reasoning why they want to lose no, weight. I love that. Yeah. I'm writing all this down for myself. <laughs> That's she, amazing. You don't You're have healing my inner child. Thank <laughs> well, you. I love nutritional Sarah. I love you. And I, I don't want you to think like, I don't know, like I have none of this figured out. I just know objectively things mm-hmm. that make me feel good. And I want to spread that out. And I know how much the world of weight loss and mm-hmm. dead like fad, fad diets really hurt me mm. and I don't want to put that out into the world anymore. I mean, but I am the first person to admit that I still oh, struggle absolutely. every single day. Like I still see a cookie and like I can see a number behind that mm. cookie rather than just enjoying that cookie. It is a mental battle. It is not linear like we were just saying. And it's it's going to be something I probably have a personal struggle with for the rest of my life and that's just a burden I have to deal with and that's not anybody else's and I'm not going to put it on them but I want to help fix that in others before it could even begin Mm -hmm. well I feel like this podcast would have 
most definitely helped me five years ago oh, one well, year ago good so i love this i love that we're talking about this and bringing I'm glad. light on the it, i'm glad i literally was looking at the submissions and i was like what could we talk about on this episode i i mean there's so many episodes mm-hmm. like in so many topics we it, could talk no, about but like for some ends. reason that one just really like no, tugged at my it. heart and i was like this needs to be in the beginning Someone episodes needed to hear this yeah. everybody needs to hear this but i feel like someone needed yeah. to hear this oh, i sure. don't know who Mom, i think honestly <laughs> stop it she's in europe (laughs) no but i feel like maybe i needed to talk about it Mm -hmm. because i mean summer's coming up i needed to hear it i was doing crunches yesterday crunches are fine yeah but i wasn't like you said like i wasn't doing them for For any other purpose purposes other than i want to be skinny yeah well hey admitting it is the first step hey all right i think do you have any housekeeping I don't have any housekeeping. I don't think so. No, this yeah. was amazing. This I'm was a really good so conversation. Good. I want to go for a walk. I want to just be one eat. with your t- body. Fist palms of. <laughs> 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 no, that was amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Nutritional Sarah, for having me. <laughs> Thank you, Emma, for giving, asking the hard questions. I really feel like a lot of this conversation happened because you were like, wait, this is what I think. And I love that. Well, I came in blind. So sorry if I didn't meet the. Meet all the no, I love that you came in blind. I intentionally didn't send I you the script play. today because I wanted you to be blind. Anything else? I don't think so. I think that's all. So on that note, you've been dished. You've been dished. <laughs>